I'm back today with another episode in our ongoing series of Python cybersecurity mini projects. Here's just a quick reminder in case this is your first video in the series. These mini projects are made to be beginner friendly. If right now you just have a basic grasp of Python syntax, you know what a loop, a variable and a function is, then these videos are the perfect way to start using that fundamental knowledge in a more applied manner. So for these mini projects, I'll be doing multiple videos so that we can progressively increase the complexity, but of course not simply for complexity's sake, but rather so we can build more powerful programs and ultimately understand them better. I also want to mention that these projects are not only great for beginners to actually learn and become better at Python, but also for anyone looking to build a portfolio and break into cybersecurity. And once any specific mini project ends, I'll give you a number of ideas of how you can continue to build on them in case you wanted to go off and use this as a starting point to do your own larger project, which I highly encourage. Napoleon, like anyone can even know that. So in the previous lesson, we built a firewall simulator to start thinking about the foundational logic underpinning a firewall. In today's lesson, we'll build a Python script designed to monitor network traffic and detect potential denial of service attacks by analyzing the rate at which IP packets are sent. If the rate exceeds a predefined threshold, which we can set, then the script will block the IP address, mitigating the impact of the attack. So before we forge ahead, let's just spend a minute to quickly review two important theoretical components related to the script. So DOS attack can come in many different shapes and forms, but here specifically we will be focusing on a very common type in which an attacker aims to disrupt your computer or network by overwhelming it with excessive traffic. Simply put, the malicious actor floods your system with data packets up until the point where a system can no longer handle it and thus goes kaput. The other thing I just want to briefly touch on is scapy, something which if you're going to be using Python in cybersecurity or just networking in general, you will become very familiar with. Scapy is a Python library that allows users to create, analyze, and intercept network packets. Scapy is awesome. It is at once flexible, powerful, and can be used for a diverse range of tasks. So I highly recommend you to learn more about Scapy following this video. And that's it. But one final thing before we get coding, I just want to mention that below, right at the top of the description, you can find links to the actual script, as well as the script we'll be using to test it by actually flooding it with packets. So I do encourage you to download them so that you can really just focus on the lesson instead of worrying about constantly needing to pause in order to do rote copy work. So here is the entire script. Let's quickly get a lay of the land. Right up top, we import all the required modules. Below this, we declare a variable representing the threshold for a DOS attack. We then declare a callback function, used mainly for incrementing packet counts for each source IP address, calculating the packet rate, and blocking the IP if the rate exceeds the threshold. Finally, we declare our main function, used mainly for checking root privileges, initializing packet count, and start time variables as well as starting the packet sniffing process with a specified callback function. Now that we have a good idea of the overall structure, let's look at each line individually. So first we import all our libraries. The OS library is used to interact with the operating system. The sys library handles system specific operations such as exiting the script. The time library will track time intervals, thereby allowing us to determine a transfer rate for the packets. Default dict is used to store and manage packet counts for each IP address. And finally from the schedule JP library, we import the sniff function and the IP class, which allows us to analyze network packets. Here we then set a global variable called threshold, which represents the maximum allowed packet rate per second for an IP address, in this case 40. We then print the threshold values to screen. We then define the function packet callback, which receives the argument packet. Inside the function, we extract the source IP address from the packet. Below this, we increment the packet count for the source IP address. We then record the current time using the time function from the time library. And below this, we calculate the time interval by subtracting the start time from the current time. We can see here that the start time is a list containing the start time as the first element. We then check if the interval is 1, meaning here that the script will evaluate whether or not a DOS attack is happening at a frequency of once every second. If the interval is equal to or larger than 1, our for loop will execute iterating through the packet counts for each IP address. We can then simply calculate the packet rate by dividing the count by the time interval. In other words, if there were 40 packets and one second passed, then obviously our packet rate is 40 packets per second. Below this, you can see I commented out a command that will show you the current IPs and rates it detects. 
Feel free to uncomment this out for yourself if you want something akin to a verbose mode. This is also very useful for debugging purposes. Now that we have this, we can check to see whether or not the packet rate exceeds the threshold, in this case 40. Additionally, we check whether the IP has not already been blocked to ensure we don't create multiple IP tables rules. If the threshold was reached and the IP is not blocked in blocked IPs, we print a message indicating that the IP address is being blocked. We also then of course actually block the IP address using the IP tables command with the OS system function. After blocking the IP, we add it to the blocked IP set to keep track of blocked IP addresses. After we've finished one such interval, we clear the packet count dictionary and restart the time so that we can repeat the process for the next interval by updating the first element of the start time list. And now finally we get to our main function. We can note here that in this case, the main guard and main function declaration have been combined. This is simply an alternative way to write it. First up we check to make sure that the script has been executed using root privileges. In this script we need root privileges for two reasons. We need it to be able to access raw network traffic. And in the case that we want to block an IP, we need it to modify the system's firewall configuration. In case we don't have root privileges, we'll print a message to the screen and exit the script with an error code. We then initialize the packet count dictionary with a default dict. The default dict is a specialized dictionary data structure which is useful for us in this script because of its ability to automatically assign a default value, i.e. 0, to a new IP address when it's first encountered, which simplifies the packet counting process for us. We then record the start time of the script in a list and initialize a blocked IP set to store blocked IP addresses. We then inform the user that network traffic monitoring has started. Finally, we start sniffing IP packets and pass them to the packet callback function for analysis. And that's it. So now that we have our script, let's get to the fun bit of testing it. Okay guys, so in order to test this, I'll be running two separate VMs. On the left is Gitgood, which will be running the DOS blocker. And on the right, we have Lobo, which will be running a packet flooding script. Now I'm not going to review that entire script now, but in case you were interested, here it is. Please pause and have a good look if you'd like. Oh, and also by the way, I do highly encourage you to test it by yourself. It really helps solidify the knowledge when you start playing around with it. So first, let's run the IP tables command on Gitgood to confirm that indeed currently there are no IPs being blocked. Great. Now let's start our DOS blocker on Gitgood. We can see it is running. Great, and finally we'll run our packet flutter on Lobo. We can see that it is running. And great, here we can see that it was indeed detected and blocked. Now we can stop both scripts. And now just remember to unblock it again if you'd like to. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson in which we got to interact not only directly with network traffic, but also with the Linux firewall. There are obviously still a number of limitations with the script, most notably the way in which we are evaluating whether or not a DOS attack is actually happening, i.e. by looking at the absolute transfer rate, which is very crude and will undoubtedly lead to a high degree of false positives and false negatives. But as I said in the beginning, we'll operate according to the principle of progressive complexity, and we'll use what we did here today in following lessons to improve on the project and learn even more about all the logical components that make up a firewall. So that's it for this lesson. If you enjoyed it, please consider flooding the like button with some packets or even run an IP tables command to subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for a Python project related to cybersecurity you'd like me to do in the future, please let me know in the comments section down below. Until then, peace out.